Hey all, Heretic here, and today in the Battlegrounds, I want to tell you about neutral minions going out of the game and coming into the game, because there's a lot of them. Decent number changing here, and some of these are pretty big. I want to start with the neutrals that are leaving. These make me sad. Some of these are the cornerstone of the game, and I'm really sad to see some of these go, and they're going to change some of the plays of the game, some of the ways we're used to seeing it. So let's jump in and see what we can talk about. First, tier one, Tavern Tipper. Some people love this, some people hate it. I always have a decent place for Tavern Tipper. As long as I've got two of them to start and I'm playing the right hero, I will happily play a Tavern Tipper. Beyond that, yeah, most heroes, they don't really synchronize well with, with the hero power. I don't want to waste gold or just not have the gold to tip with. So I don't love them for a lot of heroes, but when they work, they really do work. So I'm kind of sad to see it go. Next is one I have loved forever, the Selfless Hero. I feel like Selfless Hero is such a cornerstone of, you know, Murlocs and whatnot back in the day. And at times when you throw it in there, you can really do some fun stuff, especially now when you combine it with cards like Hawk Strider and whatnot. I'm kind of sad that this one is going, but hopefully the new thing they've replaced it with is at least comparable. The new one I really liked, but is now going to leave us is Iron Groundskeeper. This is the battle cry to give a minion taunt or remove taunt. Yeah, annoying when you had Bran on the board because it would just take off and put back on, but or put on and take off depending on what you're doing with it. But this was a versatile card. I really liked the ability to remove taunt from cards and to give taunt to others. I always like being able to have a targeted taunt. This was a great way to play the game because sometimes the idea of removing a taunt could really change how a card would work. And it wasn't easy to pull off because you had to have a spot to cycle the battle cry for, so I don't feel like it was ever a problem, but they felt like it was time for it to go. Reef Explorer, I love. Every time this card's in the game, I feel better. I want to cycle cards. That's how I play the game. Give me a brand, give me this thing, and I want to go off. Give me a golden brand, and now let us really have a good time. The fact that this is leaving again makes me really sad. It keeps going and then coming back. So I'm going to hope it returns again, but, you know, whenever it's not here, it doesn't feel as good. Leroy the Reckless. Can we talk about a card that has so polarized people that sometimes I think it's useless and other times I think it's the most powerful card in the game? It is such a good counter to mess with people, to deal with massive minions. I don't know what they've put in the game to replace Leroy, but if they haven't, I feel like Leroy is gonna come back if big stats run completely out of control because Leroy was the easiest way to deal with a random monster minion that was way too big for this part of the game when it arrived. Mithrax. Uh, Mithrax was a card that I loved it the first time it was around. Uh, the second time it was around, I barely saw it. I feel like this is a card that really didn't age well in the game. That power creep is a thing and it shows this card just wasn't fast enough that it's time needed to be gone. So I'm kind of happy to see Mithrax gone even as much as I used to love it. Keymaster Theotar, another card that I feel like hadn't really aged great. I mean, I had some good Team Master games. Team Master definitely could pop off. You got a Golden Brand, you got a Golden Elise, you had your Team Master Gold. Any of those scenarios, you could make Team Master work. But I feel like the majority of the time, Team Master just wasn't effective. It was too slow. It hadn't aged well again. And that makes me sad because I really had enjoyed Team Master when Team Master's time was here to shine, but seems like it's past. Uther the Lightbringer. Can we talk about a card that changed the game so dramatically back in the day? It used to be that, you know, whatever you had a weak card, it was weak forever. There was no blood gems to put on cards. There was no spells to cast to buff them. Now we have Uther and it was great and he changed the game and now Uther's gone. So I'm really hoping the spells that we're going to be seeing are going to kind of replace cards like this, you know, having to be in the game. That way we can just have a couple spells to do the job so they're in every game and we can take out these minions so they don't fill the pool up as much. That's the hope at least. And finally, a card that was incredibly powerful when it came out, but it certainly had rougher times recently, but still good at the right board. Zap. Zap is that counter to that Titus in the back you just can't deal with. But at the same time, they haven't found a way to buff it yet. They haven't found the Uther. Maybe their board's so good they don't have room to play the Uther on the Titus. Zap, I always enjoyed. 
I, every now and then you'd run into the giant golden zap that was a monster someone would have. And it was just funny to see you know, that when you tripled into zap or you're playing Galakron and you get a zap because it's the best thing offered you and you're like, well, yes, this is what we're doing. It still was fun to see play out. So I'll, I'm very sad to see zap gone. And let's talk about the new neutral cards coming into the game. Some of these are very interesting and I am not as excited about them coming in as the ones leaving I'm kind of saddened by, but let's give them a chance to see how they work out. Beleaguered Battler. This tier one, four, five, at the start of your turn, lose one attack is pretty amazing for the early game. And since it's only one minion, doesn't have a death rattle or reborn, not gonna be too bad. And its value definitely decreases quickly. It's an interesting card. I wanna see how this plays out. I mean, your opponent gets this on turn one, you probably just lost that combat. But at the same time, in four turns, it's useless. So there's definitely a question about should I take this or shouldn't I take it? I mean, it definitely is a lot of tempo, but I still think economy trumps this. I'd rather have a shell collector, but you know, given my options, I'll probably be taking this in the early game. Next up, we have tier three, three one, Ferrix Wrath of the Sun, Divine Shield, Avenge Four, Give a random friendly minion divine shield. I, I, I mean, I don't know how I feel about this card. First of all, it's three ones, so the stat line's not great, but it's tier three, so I mean, I guess it's not too bad. I think this is supposed to be Selfless Hero's replacement, but this is lackluster at best. It's Avenge Four. Who am I supposed to play this on? An un, just with an undead or a beast board? Well, a beast board, it wants to die, so I, I definitely don't want to use it on there. I need those death rattles to trigger and an undead board? I mean, I could see it, I guess, but it's not undead, so I don't want it on my undead board because it's not benefiting from the aura attack that we usually deal with, unless that's been changed. So I really don't know how I feel about Ferrix. It certainly looks like a very subpar minion right now, but we'll play some games and see how it works out. Tier 5, 2, 4, and Scrolled Fungus has plus one, plus two for each tavern spell you've cast the game wherever this is. So that means you cast 10 spells, it's getting past plus 10, plus 20. It's an interesting card. I don't hate it. It depends how much spells we're actually gonna be casting. Obviously, if you're playing a hero that gets a bonus or you know either more spells or cheaper spells, and Scrolled Fungus is gonna be great. If you're playing a hero that's already trying to do something else, it might not work out for you, but it sounds like an interesting, fun way to work the spells into the game. and. It, it, minion that benefits from them sounds fun to me tier 508 mad matador taunt when this would take damage deal it to a random enemy minion instead once per combat now it's an interesting tech card folks you splash this thing you know your opponent is running like a 400 400 top, you know freaking divine shield whatever this thing is going to reflect that 400 back at someone I'm assuming if you golden this card, it will do it twice. So, oh, nasty. I mean, you don't, can't control what it hits, but that makes it even better sometimes, depending on their board, what you could snipe with it. I do like this as a fun counter card. My only concern is a random nature. I prefer to be able to control my counters, but still interesting. Next, we have tier six. 5-7 Nala the Redeemer. Whenever you cast a tavern spell, give a friendly minion of each type plus two, plus one. This is obviously meant for casting spells in a menagerie build. It looks really cool. If you have a hero that can generate extra spells or make your spells cheaper, that's gonna be great. Obviously, if you're casting very expensive spells, that's not gonna work because you're only gonna be able to cast one or two a turn, but still a very interesting prospect. I kind of want to see how this one plays out and how spells in general work over the duration, but it sounds fun at least. Tier six, Worgen Vigilante N20. Wind Fury, this minion always attacks an enemy minion that can kill if possible. So I'm assuming that means if your entire board is bigger than it, it's going to attack, you know, it's it can't kill it, but it's going to attack the weakest thing the enemy has essentially, or not exactly the weakest thing, whatever's weaker than it. And since it's a 1020, and if you golden this thing, a 2040, that's a lot of different minions and it's got Wind Fury, so it's swinging twice. It's actually a really badass counter. I'm pretty excited to see how this works. This is the new version of Zap, and I gotta say, this looks like the superior version of Zap, but let's play some games and see how it works. 
So those are the neutrals going in and out of the game. What do you think? Are you excited? Do you think these aren't great? I'm, they're very, they don't look bad. What we're used to are so iconic cards that it feels bad to see them gone. To then have new ones, even if they might be comparable, doesn't feel great. In the case of Ferrix versus Selfless Hero, I don't feel good about Ferrix. But in the case of Zap versus Worgen Vigilante, now that's another conversation. Give me the Worgen Vigilante, that sounds better. But let's see how it plays out. Thanks for watching all. I hope you had a good time. I hope you're excited about these cards. Let me know in the comments below. I really want to hear what you think about some of these neutrals that are leaving and coming into the game. I'll catch you in the battlegrounds. Until then, have a good time. Later.